Hey guys, how's it going? If you are seeking to improve hamstring flexibility and hip mobility and potentially get into front splits, this video is for you. I will show you what techniques and drills I've been using to build front splits over the last few years and also what I'm doing currently to maintain this ability in my mid 30s with a plan to be able to do this long into my future, into the seventh and eighth decade of life. And no, I have not done gymnastics or ballet or dance in my youth. I've been an active teenager with, you know, just a regular stretching routines during our PE classes. And I've been practicing yoga in my 20s. However, my hip mobility and just general overall flexibility is much better than it's ever been. In the last five years, I've definitely changed my approach. And the biggest achievement was getting rid of recurring pains and aches in my hips and also ended up doing things that I never thought I would like side splits like sissy squats and cossack squats this is absolutely possible but you have to gain understanding you have to have intention and you have to have consistency but before we get into the drills we need to understand certain concepts like I said understanding first so what happens when we stretch any sensory experience from our skin, from our joints, all the soft tissues really, all this is possible thanks to the mechanoreceptors that are embedded in our skin, in our joint capsules, in our tendons, and our muscle. Mechanoreceptors are specialized neurons that detect mechanical stimuli, such as stretch, touch, pressure, and convert them into electrical signals that are sent to the central nervous system through the spinal cord, towards our somatosensory cortex. So when someone strokes your skin, when you're stretching, when you're lifting weights, mechanoreceptors are doing their job and measuring certain variables. Why am I talking about mechanoreceptors? Well, mechanoreceptors are part of our structure, part of our physiology, are uh, embedded in our skin, in our tissues to protect us. So we need to know how to proceed with stretching techniques and uh, with our training so that the training is effective. In this video specifically, I want to talk about two types of mechanoreceptors that are relevant to the topic of front splits. Those would be muscle spindles and Golgi tendon organ. Both of these are sense organs and proprioceptors and provide information about position, position of our body in space, mainly about what's happening in the muscle and what's happening in the tendon. So muscle spindles are proprioceptors located in the muscle around, kind of spiraling around the muscle fibers and they sense stretch and also the speed of change of stretch or speed of a stretch. So how far is the muscle stretched and also how fast is it stretched? So during your stretching, you may feel like you're at the end point where things are getting uncomfortable so at that moment, muscle spindles send a reflex arc to the spinal cord, what makes that muscle that you're stretching contract. And that's basically a protective mechanism of our body. Injury prevention. This is called stretch reflex. Not only that, it would cause your hamstring to contract and the antagonists of the opposite muscle, like quadricep in this scenario, to relax. Which means that when you're going deep in the stretch, your knee suddenly starts bending because the hamstrings start flexing the knee. This is also called reciprocal inhibition, meaning that when one muscle is contracting, the other one will have to relax. And that is to protect us from overstretching. Because imagine what would happen if both muscles at both sides were contracting. Something would give. Now, the second proprioceptor, the Golgi tendon organ, that's the uh, sense organ that is located at the myotendinous junction, meaning between the tendon and the muscle. Golgi tendon organs sense tension. This is relevant to where we uh, put external load on the muscle when we start lifting weights, for instance. So when Golgi tendon organ perceives the tension is simply too high and the muscle is working extremely hard, what it will do, it will cause a reflex. That reflex arc will inhibit the muscle, which will cause the muscle to relax and cause the opposite muscle to the antagonist to contract to protect the muscle from injury. So this one is called autogenic inhibition. So imagine a scenario when you're lifting super heavy dumbbell to do bicep curl and the tension will be so great that the reflex arc from Golgi tendon organ from the tendon would cause the bicep to relax and your elbow would extend, tricep will take over and you would potentially drop the weight or just uh, drop the rep. 
And those are the concepts that we are applying to talk about techniques to use to improve brand your emotion. <laughs> now we move into PNF, which is proprioceptive neuromuscular facilitation. And it's a technique that is based on uh, working with your mechanoreceptors in your tendons and muscles. This is a technique known to increase range of motion and it's been researched and tested and it has proven to be even more effective than static, ballistic or dynamic stretching. So many therapists actually use PNF to rehab patients post-surgery, post-injuries, but also it is used by athletes to improve performance. PNF also is commonly referred to as hold, relax and contract, relax technique. Now, the core principle of PNF is that after a muscle is contracted maximally, it can relax maximally. So imagine that when you're working on flexibility of a muscle, if you're able to contract it maximally, you will be able to afterwards relax it fully to increase the stretch. Uh, there are two techniques that have been sort of differentiated that are the base of PNF. First one was CR, which is contract relax method. So you would contract the muscle, and then use that post-isometric um, relaxation to stretch it more. So that's a CR method. And then there is a contract, relax, antagonist contract uh, method. CRAC, C-R-A-C method, okay, of PNF, which means that you would contract the muscle you want to stretch and then relax it and stretch it, while at the same time contract the opposite muscle to increase flexibility of the target muscle. Anyway, I know it sounds a little bit complicated when I'm talking about this. Let me just put it into the practice, okay? When we start doing this, it should really become much clearer. In order to maintain these increases in range of motion, you would actually uh, have to do at least two sets of PNF each week. So guys, once you gain flexibility, it's not like you gain it forever. You, if you don't use it, if you don't do it, you will lose it. Commit to sustainable practice, something that you can do, something you can do regularly, find suitable time of the day, find suitable environment, find suitable training partner, but stick to this, okay? And this will pay in great results. To get into the front split, First, we need to cover certain steps that everyone really needs to go through, like improving hip flexion and hip extension, building flexibility of your hip flexors and building flexibility of your hip extensors. All right, guys, first things first, let's improve hip flexion. So this is for the front leg. Let's build strong hip flexors. You can click on the link above so then you can start the drills at home. And at the same time, you want to stretch the hip extensors. In this case, it would be your hamstrings and your glutes. So you can start in a basic setup in a hinge. You can do it on the ground, ideally with knee supported, using some blocks to support your hands, or with foot elevated so you're a little bit more upright. See whatever works better for the back knee. Now, common error in terms of the form and setup. Lots of people go into a forward fold uh, and round their lower back rather than actually tilting pelvis forwards. In order to get good stretch on the hamstrings, it's all about moving insertion away from the origin or origin away from insertion. In this case, moving the sit bone away from the back of the knee, which means your pelvis needs to tilt forwards rather than your lower back rounding and rounding. It may look like your head is getting closer to the knee, but in fact, it needs to be your lower abdomen moving to the top of the thigh. And guys, another point is that if you have your foot elevated, you don't want to have it so high that your whole upper body tilts backwards and you have to soften the standing knee. Make sure the standing leg is straight so you really ground it. It's okay to soften the knee of the front leg, but work on the hinge. All right, then you're going to holding the position. 90 seconds, holding position. Go to your barrier and spend time under tension. That's your step one. Very simple. Treat this as a static stretch to begin with. Now, after 90 seconds, you start deploying your first contraction. I would say 10 seconds, pressing heel down towards the floor, like you're trying to kick through the ground. After that, you're going to have that short period of relaxation in the hamstring after that contraction. So then you'll be able to use that CR method and go a little bit deeper. So here I'm hinging a little bit more after my contraction. And I will start again. I'll uh, again speed it up for you. So inhaling and I'm pressing heel down through the ground. And again, hold it for 10 seconds or 10 counts. 
and then exhale and I'm hinging deeper. So I'm trying to increase range of motion. Three reps like this. And here I go again. I'm pressing the heel into the fence. So again, you won't see anything, right? You will see a little bit of tension in the arms and the trunk, but that's, I'm still pressing with 20, 30% of my max strength. And then I'm going to hinge a little bit deeper. You saw that the angle in the hip got smaller. And that's step one, guys. If you're not doing that yet, well, this is your starting point. Now, next step or second simultaneous step in stretching the hamstrings is building strength in the hamstrings in the lengthened position. This is called eccentric loading. This is again moving the origin away from the insertion, but also working with the load at the same time. Start with light weights and you're trying to, again, execute pelvic tilt. So sticking your butt out. And ideally you would use a mirror reflection to watch your form or use a feedback from a coach or a colleague. Now, the second element for building front split is to improve hip extension. That refers to the back leg in the split. We want to strengthen hip extensors like glute max and hamstrings. So click on that link in the corner to find drills specific for that. And the next step is to improving flexibility of your hip flexors, mainly psoas and rectus femoris. So my first suggestion here, what I do is just simple lunges with the back knee on the ground and again guys we're starting as with the hamstrings in a static stretch you see how i'm staying upright pubic bone forwards tailbone tucked under the front foot really grounded i'm using dowels you're driving dowels into the floor again going into the first uh, relaxation deepening the stretch i'm taking a deep breath in and again you see how i'm kind of rising a, a little bit as i'm pushing that knee down and forwards trying to flex the psoas the, the drills are a little bit shorter than normally pushing knee forwards and down and then as i'm sinking i'm squeezing my glute max trying to go deeper so i'm doing crack method again crac to see that my hips are basically prepared for split position now guys there's more <laughs> so from the lunge tuck your toes under so then you can work towards lifting the back knee and actually building the posterior leg into extension into knee extension so we're lifting the knee lowering the knee trying to stay upright use the blocks to help your stability you don't want to lift your whole pelvis remember it's really just working on the back leg uh, or going back hip moving into extension so it's not nice and easy peasy passive stretch. This is work and the legs will feel the burn. Okay, so the second thing to create flexibility in the in hip in the hip flexor, specifically in the rectus femoris, which is the only one of the four quadriceps that actually crosses the knee and the hip, will be in a couch stretch. We will try to create opening through the hip, so hip extension and knee flexion, creating that lengthening of the quadriceps. So we're moving origin away from the insertion. You will need a cushion or a block to put uh, support the knee. What we're aiming for is the variation with the shin against the wall. If you can't do that, you're going to do that using a band or a hand, doing it on the mat, or maybe even using a sofa, so then it's a little bit easier on the thighs. So we start with a static stretch of the rectus fem, and we're trying to go sort of as upright as possible. Okay, and now let's put it all together and work towards the splits. So again, have another look. That's yet another day, me practicing uh, the splits. I'm starting nowhere close to the split. I'm starting from a half split, and again, my knees on the ab mat, so that leg goes back. I'm using some blocks to support myself, and I'm doing contractions. So I'm going into the stretch, I'm holding it, but then I will contract, and you see how my pelvis goes up because I'm contracting, I'm pushing front foot down, and I'm trying to contract the hip flexor of the back leg, so I'm going up. So I'm trying to control that range of motion. I'm staying square. I'm facing and looking towards the wall in front of me. That's where my pel pelvis is pointing. And again, with that post-contraction relaxation of the muscle, I'll be able to go a little bit deeper. It will take time, but you need to go through those stages. You see here, I'm correcting myself, like internally rotating the back like even more to stay square. You can use this variation as well with the block, um, sit bone supported on the block, so I can have like a starting off point for the liftoff. So you see, working towards the split, it's it's work. It's not like it's magically happens. 
um, if you want this to be sustainable, you need to put in the reps and you need to put in the also the science behind flexibility and mechanoreceptors. And at the same time, prevent yourself uh, from injuring yourself, right? You want to stave off injury. So you want this to be sustainable. That's why we don't want to go quickly into the splits. We want to build up control. That's it for today, guys. If you got something out of this video and you are keen to see more content, please hit the bell, subscribe. And if you're keen on learning how to do side splits, that will be uh, one of the next videos. In order to go to side splits, we will need to work on improving flexibility of the groin muscles and adductor muscles and also the hamstring. So you may get started here.